in briefest outline. Between the 15th and the 19th centuries, around 12 million Africans were shipped across the Atlantic by European slave traders. An unknown additional number died resisting capture or before embarkation. Around 10 to 15 percent of those who took ship died on the voyage, and the same or more died within a year of their arrival. The survivors and any children that they might have were faced with perpetual enslavement. Beyond those numbers, it's worth recalling what this actually meant in terms of a human life. We are talking, of course, about irrevocable abduction from home and family, a voyage of weeks chained in the dark aboard tiny heaving ships packed in with hundreds of naked strangers living, dying, and dead. If you survived this, then you faced the prospect of being literally worked to death, sometimes working the sugar boilers on shifts lasting for 24 hours or more. Death rates are generally significantly higher than birth rates, so fresh captives were always needed to keep the system working. Such families as enslaved people might manage to form were always fragile. Their so-called owners could and did separate couples at will and normally separated parents and children. Enslaved women were routinely raped. Defiance, of which there was a good deal, was met with astonishing brutality. After a slave rebellion in Suriname, for example, adults were hanged from the gibbet by an iron hook through his ribs until dead, or bound to a stake and roasted alive over a slow fire while being tortured with glowing tongs. Children, by contrast, were tied to a cross to be broken alive and their heads severed. Atrocities like this were by design exemplary, deterring you not only from open resistance but from such heinous crimes as trying to learn to read or attempting to discover the date of your own birth. Which is a reminder that the atrocities are in a sense a distraction from the underlying horror of arbitrary subjection to another human being's will. 